Open your Bibles tonight to Psalm 18, the 18th Psalm. If you need the notes for tonight, just hold your hand up. The men are ready to serve you with those, preaching through the book of Psalms. Now come to Psalm 18. When you look at Psalm 18 and you see that there are 50 verses, don't panic. All right, don't panic. We're not going to get all those verses tonight. In fact, we're going to be skimming off the top. Now, how many have ever done actual skimming off the top? Some of you have, we're talking about the milk. You understand about the milk? We had old Jersey milk cow there in Texas and bought weed milk. The milk was so rich that you just let it sit a little bit and you start getting that big pile of stuff off the top. So before you drank it, you skimmed the cream off the top. And so that's where the expression comes from, skimming off the top. After you skim off the top, there's still lots of good stuff underneath, all right? So it's still rich underneath. But that big cream off the top where you make the butter and the cottage cheese and the cheese itself, I'm getting hungry. We'll just dismiss now and go home. No, we're not going to do that. So we're just kind of skimming off the top tonight of this psalm, and then we'll go back. Uh, there's so many little things in there to help us, all good stuff underneath. But looking at just skimming off the top and getting the main context, I think, tonight, and we find in this psalm, Psalm 18 is about the road to a victorious life. The road to a victorious life. So Psalm chapter 18, beginning in verse number 1. So stay alert tonight and it will help you if we can just put it into practice and put it into place. Psalm 18, verse number 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Let me pause there. Let's go back. Most of your Bibles probably have uh, that introduction. Does yours have that introduction in there? All right. In fact, I did not verify, but I've been told in the Hebrew that introduction is still there also. But it says, notice what it says. It says, A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, in 2 Samuel we find he actually has this same song uh, recorded. And so it's an amazing passage, usual many times. So that's the idea. It's when he, on the day he was delivered from the hand of all his enemies. How many of his enemies, class? All of them. And from the hand of Saul. Now, verse number one, this is his song. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried unto my God, he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Verse 29. Verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God. It is God that giveth, that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Father, we need you tonight. Lord, so much in there of what we've read and what we did not read yet. So, Lord, I pray that tonight you would open our hearts, open our spirits, and we'll make some decisions for you. Lord, it's vital that we stay on the road to a victorious life. It's vital that if we're not on the road, we get that way. So, Lord, help us tonight just to glean from David's life as he, as you speak through him to us tonight through this psalm that we might be on that road, that we might be on guard, that we might stay there. Help us, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Again, it's the road to a victorious life. We find David uses this psalm here, but also, as I said, in 2 Samuel, it is almost, by, uh, almost identical with some variations to it. So I believe this song is probably a song David sang probably several times, maybe many times as he would go through the battles, as, as God would deliver him, and he'd just be so filled with so much praise, so much excitement, so much joy about what God has done in his life. So he probably sang this many times. It's kind of a, 
a song of a accumulation over all the battles, all the issues, and all the trials of his life. How many remember and understand David had a lot of trials in his life? David had a lot of enemies in his life. He had a lot of battles in his life. From Saul, his, the first king there, his boss, even to his own son coming and trying to take his kingdom and running him out of the city. So David was delivered from all his enemies, and because of that there was a certain joy and a little focus and some praising God for the victories and praising God for his life and all the victories that, should be, that were won. By the way, we should be praising God also for the victories in our life. You say, well, I have no victories. You're here tonight. That's a victory. Amen. You've got a place to live. That's a victory. No doubt all of us have had some struggles with people that have been antagonistic to us, people that have ridiculed us, people that have done us wrong, challenges in our life and battles in our life. And so God has given us many victories. So we should be praising God. We should be magnifying God for the victories God has given us. The problem is we don't focus on the victories. We focus on the present battles. We don't focus on the victories that God has brought us through, we look at the issues that we're involved right now. So we need to occasionally just stop like David and say, you know, God has delivered me. God has provided for me. God has done some great works in my life. And then praise Him for the victories in our life. I guarantee if we focus on those victories and how God has brought us through, when we face the next battle or the battle that you're in, it'll make it so much easier and so much better. So tonight we're looking at the road, David's road, how he maintained that victorious life. You know, David was not perfect. He wasn't always on top. But looking at overall life, he died at a good old age. He died still of king of Israel and died still right with God, still loving God. The apostle Paul, he was beheaded. He spent years in prison, and yet we would say he had a victorious life. Would we not say Paul had a victorious life? Yes, but he got his head chopped off at the end. Yes, he was in prison. Yes, he was all those things, but he had a victorious life. So don't say, well, I don't have a victorious life because I don't have a big house. That's not a measure of a victorious life. You say, well, I don't have a victorious life because I don't have a big car, because I don't have this. Because No, if you're saved and you're serving God and living for God and finish life strong in the place God has, for you that is by definition a victorious life so tonight we're going to see how we can have a victorious life how we can have this life that is a life of serving God and finish with what God has us to do and finish strong so are you on the road to a victorious life if not let's get on it if you're on it stay on it if you've gotten off of it and been detoured off of it you come back and so David now is kind of looking at his life some helps for us to be on this victorious road to the victorious life. Are you with me tonight? Yeah. All right, so you got to stay alert. I'll speak as fast as I can. You pay attention as fast as you can, and we'll get out of here before the 4th of July picnic. <laughs> so here we go. How do we get on this road? I want you to notice, first of all, the road to a victorious life begins with a personal declaration. Personal declarations to God. In other words, you're making clear decisions and statements to yourself and to God about what you are and who He is and what you plan to do. And these declarations that He gives us here that we're looking at tonight are for both, listen, current and future. Current and future. He's not resting on the past. He's not resting on, this is what I did We'll see that a little bit later. But these declarations that's going to keep him on the right road is not just where I am now and not just what I've done. He said, but I'm looking at the future. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to start doing. Or this is what I'm going to keep doing. Our problem is many Christians are not in the place where they ought to be tonight because they stop making declarations of what they will do and just rest on what they have done. Instead of looking at what they want to do and what God wants them to do, they look back on just the things how it used to be. But we find he gives some clear declarations to God about God, about, and this is going to keep him on that road. It begins, the road begins with some personal declarations. Notice the first one is in verse number one. I will love thee, O Lord. That first declaration, he declared, I, notice what it says, will love thee. Now, he was a man, the Bible tells us, after God's own heart. 
And he did love God all those times when he did sing and did write the Psalms. But he's saying, no, I'm not counting on just my past. He said, I'm making a declaration now, God. I'm telling you right now, I will love you. He said, I'm going to stay in love with you and I'm going to continue to love you. We need to make that declaration for ourselves. Let me help you. If you don't get anything else out of the message tonight, one of the greatest things that will help your Christian life, one of the greatest things that will help you stay on the road, one of the greatest things that will give you, will solidify your Christian life and your Christian walk and help you to grow, is if you'll just decide, I'm going to love God. I'm going to make Him the love of my life. Now, if we make God the love of our life, all the other loves and people we're supposed to love will fall into place. But we need to just decide we're going to love Him. So you decide. By the way, love is the decision. You can decide to love. It's not that queasy feeling you get inside. It's not that uh, sweaty palms that you get. It's a decision that we make. That's why God tells the husbands, husbands, love your wives. He commands it. He said, well, I don't feel like it. You don't have to feel like it. You just have to decide to do it. Amen. Amen. So we find it's a decision. So you need to decide, I'm going to love God. In other words, right now, if you look at your affection and your walk with God, is it out of duty or is it out of love? Now, duty's good. And duty's right, but it ought to be stemmed in love. He said, I will love thee, O Lord. So you decide it, then you dedicate to it. Say, I will, I'm going to do it. No matter what happens, no matter how else it goes, I will love God. And then you determine to do it, and then you declare it. Say, God, I'm going to love you. That's what the psalmist there did, verse number one. I will love thee, O Lord. Wow. Wow. Just decide you're going to love God. You realize how much more joy you'll have in the house of God if you're loving Him? You realize how much more you'll love His Word if you just love Him? You realize how much more fun it will be serving Him if we love Him? Because if we love, we will serve. For 2 Corinthians 5.14, I think it's in your notes. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we that judge, if one died for all, then we're all dead. So the love of Christ constrains me. It pressures me it propels me it draws me into himself we just need to decide tonight i'd make a declaration how am i going to get on that road to a victorious life david says i got to figure it out he said i will love you he didn't say because i don't now he's saying because i do i'm going to continue to do so deuteronomy 6 5 thou shalt love the lord thy god with some of thine heart no with most of my heart no with what class all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. What part of all don't we understand? God said we're supposed to love him with all. He said, well, I don't feel it. It's not feeling. It's a decision to love. It's a decision to have compassion for. It's a decision to serve. It's a decision to care for. And so we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart. What's going to get us on this road, this road to victorious life, is David says, man, I'm just going to love God. I'm going to love God. Matthew 10, 37, He that loveth father or mother more than me, Jesus said, is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. doesn't mean we're not supposed to love our parents and not, spo- not supposed to love our kids. No, but we're to love Him more. And the more we love Him, the more we will be able to love those around us. So, well, I can love my brother. Good. I can love my, my mother. Yes, but can you love other Christians? Whoa. God says we're supposed to. 1 John 4, 19. We love Him because He first loved us. You know, sometimes Christians think, well, I'm so wonderful because I love God. No, we love Him because He first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a, what class? Liar. Wow. There at the end of that verse, in verse 21, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So we'll have a love for the brother. So, how do I get on this road to a victorious Christian life? David, you were delivered so many times. You went through so many trials. You had your ups and downs. How did you maintain that road? He said, as I look at it, I just decided I will love God. As I think about that, I think about what if Jesus showed up tonight and asked you and I the same question he asked Simon Peter in John 21, 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Boy, three times he asked him, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, lovest thou me? 
So we need some declarations. Declaration is, I will love him. I'm just going to love God. You walk out of here tonight and say, you know, no matter what happens, every day, every hour, I'm going to love him with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, with all I've got. I'm going to just fall in love with Jesus again. Wow, it will change your life and put you on the road and keep you on the road to a victorious life. So I will love him. Very quickly, let's notice some other declarations. We won't spend as much time on those. Look at verse number two. Verse number one, I will love thee. Verse number two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He will what, class? Trust. trust. He said, I, he, he obviously trusts him because he's a man after God's own heart, and he's been following God. He said, but I'm going to also keep on trusting. I will trust. So you say, preacher, how can I do it? Let's declare I'm going to love him, and declare I'm just going to trust him. If we trust him, we'll be able to obey him. In fact, we sing that song all the time, and the children sing it, trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be miserable in Jesus. Is that what it says? No. No other way to be what? Happy in Jesus. Say, preacher, I want to be happy in my Christian walk. I want to have this victory. Well, then trust and obey. And there's no other way. So it's just being able to trust Him. Trust Him with our finances. Trust Him with our time. Trust Him with our kids. Trust Him with our life. Just keep trusting Him. It's a declaration. See, the problem is, we expect we come to church and we say, well, we'll see what God does. We'll see what happens to my life. And I'm just going to cruise. No, we have to declare it like the psalmist here did. Like David said, I will love Him and I will trust Him. Verse number 3, we find another I will. I will call upon the Lord. In other words, we're going to pray. He said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to call upon Him. I'm going to spend time with Him. I'm going to look to Him. Boy, if we'll just decide, you know, I'm going to love Him, I'm going to trust Him, and I'm going to call on Him. I'm just going to spend time in prayer. I will continue to pray. Verse 49. Therefore will I give, what class? Thanks unto thee. I'll give thanks. He said, I'm going to love, I'm going to trust, I'm going to call, and I'm going to give thanks. Preacher, how can I stay on this successful, this, this, this road to a victorious life? Be thankful to God for all that He does. Amen? Be, th be thankful unto God. We need to have a thankful heart and a thankful spirit for everything He's done. David, who was delivered so many times, he said, David, what are you going to do? He said, well, I will thank you. I'm going to be a thankful person. You know, I've got in my prayer journal, I pray it several times a week about being thankful. The Bible does say we're to be thankful for all things and in all things. Sometimes people say, well, you don't have to be thankful for everything. God says we're to be thankful for everything. I believe it's in your notes, Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father of name, Lord Jesus Christ. doesn't mean it's going to be good things. You say, God, but you've got something in this for me. You're doing something through this in my life or through somebody else's life. You're letting this come into my life to be a blessing to somebody else. So I thank you for it. So we're to be thankful always for all things. Then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So if I'm supposed to give thanks in everything and for everything, that pretty well covers it all. Hello, I'm supposed to be thankful to Him. How many know that your life is more pleasant when people are thankful to you? How many know your life is more pleasant when you're thankful to other people? How much more for God? So, David, how are we going to get on this Road to a victorious life. How did you get there? How did you finish up so strong? He said, well, I just decided. I made some declaration. I was going to love. I was going to trust. I was going to call and give thanks. Boy, that ought to be a first thought in the mornings. Thankful to God. He said, well, I didn't sleep very well. You woke up. <laughs> Amen. Be thankful. Be thankful that you've got a day, that you had a place to sleep. Be thank First thought, first response, never miss a chance to be thankful to God. Very quickly. Personal declarations. Number two, it is traveled with purity determined. It is traveled with purity determined. Are we able to keep up with the... We got some issues with the slides? Did I goof them up? Oh, all right, there we go. 
Travel with purity determined. Travel with purity. In other words, he determined that on this road he was going to be pure. He determined that on this road he's going to live right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to make up our mind we're going to do that. You can't say, well, I'll just see if I live pure. We're going to see if I start doing right. No, we have to say, I want to live pure. So he traveled this old road, this victorious life, road to the victorious life by purity determined. Verse 21. And we'll just go through the list very quickly. God gives us a little list here. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. So how did he determine? He determined, he said, I'm just going to keep God's ways. I'm just going to keep them. I'm, whatever God's way is, whatever God's, I'm just going to keep them. I'm just going to walk the way God has for me. Number two, verse 23, he said, I kept myself from mine iniquity. I'm going to pause on this. Look at verse 23. I also was upright before thee. I kept myself from mine iniquity. That's an interesting thought. He didn't say I just kept myself from iniquity or from sin. He said I kept myself from my iniquity, my sin, my error. Now I'm not going to ask you what your iniquity is. And all God's people said, Phew. <laughs> but we all, unfortunately, have, as the Bible talks about, a besetting sin. It says in Hebrews 12, Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. We all, by our nature, by our background, whatever, we have some sins that we're more susceptible to. We all have some sin that we battle with. We all have some sin that unfortunately probably throughout the day you battle with it or think about it or play with it. And so we have to understand that he says, I kept myself from mine iniquity. He said, I figured out where my battle was. I figured out where I have temptation. He said, I figured out this iniquity. He said, I kept myself from it. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have to get to the place where instead of just playing with it, instead of just thinking about it, we need to keep ourselves away from it. So when that besetting sin, whatever it is, and you know what it is, and God knows what it is, and the devil who's been watching you knows what it is. By the way, the devil can't read your mind. He just doesn't have to. He just watches what you do. And so he knows that, so he's going to be enticing, and the old flesh want that. And so you're going to say, no, I do not want to do that. I'm going to keep myself away from that. You say, preacher, what happens if I don't? You won't stay on the road to a victorious life. You'll end up in sin. You'll end up de de grace, disgracing yourself and her doing damage, damage to the cause of Christ. But I've kept myself from mine iniquities. So we have to work on our own holiness. Work on our own temptations. Watch out for, the pet, for those pet sins in our life. See, he traveled this old road with purity determined. He said, I've, I've, I've determined this. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, he said, this is what I've done. I've kept his ways. I kept myself from my own iniquity. Very quickly, I was upright before him. Verse 23. For all his judgments were before me. Oop. Wrong place. I was all, verse 23. I was also upright before him. The word upright there means entire. It means integrity. And it means truth. Entire integrity and truth. In other words, he says, when I stand before God, he said, when I call upon God, he said, I'm sincere. I'm in truth. There's no shadiness. There's no lies. There's no facade. There's no hypocritical attitude. He said, I am just upright before him. You say, preacher, how can I travel this road? Make sure when you go before God, you're upright. You're just honest. You're just true. You are just entire before him. Very quickly, how I travel with Purity determined. You have to determine you're going to do this. He said, I have not departed from him. Verse 21. See how fast we're going? We'll get out of here before July 3rd. Verse 21. I have kept thy ways, Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. He said, I didn't depart. I didn't leave him. I didn't bail out. He said, when I, if I could paraphrase it, he said, when I went on my summer vacation, I took God with me. When I'm on my summer vacation, I still went to church. When I was on my summer vacation, I did, not, I did not take God's tithe and give it to Disneyland. Hello? I, I, he said, I did not depart from him. I did not wickedly leave him. I just stayed with him. So the idea, you see, unfortunately, many people, they want Jesus just when they need him. 
or when it feels convenient, or when they feel like they have a need, or they want that peace we just sang about. But he says, no, I'm not going to depart. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to abandon him at all. But see, you have to determine that. Because if you don't determine it, it won't happen. When I was about 20 years old, yes, I was 20 years old, me and George Washington, same time. When I was 20 years old, about, about just about a year after I got saved, I had to make a decision. I said, you know, I'm just going to be in God's house. I just, you just have to determine that. That if, unless I'm providentially hindered. Now, a lot of times people say providentially hindered. They don't know what it means. It means God prevented you. That's what providentially hindered means. It means providence, God prevented, he stopped me. So if, because, well, I was tired, that's not providentially hindered. Providentially hindered is if you've got 102 fever and you've got a broken leg, then you're providentially hindered. Hello. How do we get on that? Oh, yeah, determine that he's going to stay. You just have to make a determination. You have to determine that you're going to live a certain way, not depart from him. Very quickly, I've determined not to put away his statutes. And I was told that I misspelled, I didn't misspell it, I just used the wrong word in there, my spell checker. How many know I'm a perfect speller? If you've been around here very long, you know my speller broke many, many years ago. But look at verse 22. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. He said, I did not put away any command of God. I did not put away any principle of God. I did not put away anything God instructed. He said, I'm just, I didn't put them away. I drew them to me. See, if you say, preacher, how can I stay on this path to a victorious life? He said, well, you just have to decide. You're not going to depart from God, and you're not going to put away any statutes. In other words, if there's any principle in the Word of God, I'm not going to put it away. I know a lot of Christians have chosen what they're going to put in the closet. Said, so there's a principle, I, I don't want to do that. It's not pleasing to the world today. It makes me look odd. It makes me sound odd. It makes me, uh, people think I'm funny. So I'm just not, I'm going to put that one away. Or I've got something else I want to do with my money, so I'm going to put that statute away. Well, if I do this, people will think I dress funny. I'm just saying we don't put away his statutes. You say, preacher, how in the world can I have this road to victorious life? Dave was telling us here, he said, man, after all the times he's delivered me, he said, I've did not put away his statutes very quickly. It has traveled. This road that, to a victorious Christian life or victori a life of victory is traveled with practical dependencies. It's traveled with practical dependencies. In other words, what are you depending on? What are you, what are you, de what's you de what, what are you depending your life on? Look at verse number two. And we've got some dependencies. Well, verse number one, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. His what class? Strength. He says, I like it, he says, my strength, my strength. The Lord is my rock. His what? Rock. See, he's depending. It's my. He's not just a rock. He's not just the rock. He's my strength. He's my rock and my fortress. In other words, he's the one that's depending on me. He protects me. My deliverer. My God. Whoa, look at there. He says, he, he's not just my fortress. He's not just my strength. He's not just my rock. He is my God. There it is again, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler, my buckler, that's my, my, my protector, my shield, if you will. He's the horn of my salvation, and he's my high tower, the place where I go to. It's, it's me, it's mine, it's personal. You say, preacher, how can I make it down this road of, to a victorious life? It's when we have some practical dependencies. In other words, it's me personally. I'm taking, I am dependent upon him. He's my strength. Where, what are you depending upon your strength for? Your own, your own youth? Yeah, when we were young, most of us have more youth, more strength. When you get beyond middle age, you might have less strength. What do they say? Old age is when, you, when your mind and your mouth make commitments your body can't fulfill. I'll do that, and you can't do that. But he says, my, he said, he's my strength, he's my rock, he's my fortress. We sing a song around here, and at one time it bothered me a little bit years and years ago until something like this pointed it out to me. We sing that song, I am his and he is mine. I am blessed beyond all measure 
He is mine. And sometimes I would think that felt kind of odd, but you know, that's what David said. He's my rock. He's my tower. He's my strength. So it's not the fact that I own him, but I'm having him, he's allowing me for him to be my strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my buckler, my horn, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Boy, I am blessed. I am blessed beyond all measure. He's mine. He's mine. What a God we serve. And so it's pract this road we're on day by day, week by week, is with practical dependencies. I'm just depending upon Him. He is my strength. He is my rock. Very quickly, it's blazed, this road. We're blazing a road, blazing a trail with practical discovery and determination. With practical discoveries and determination. In other words, we discover it and we have determined in other words, by experience and by exhortation. We get, I've, you know, in your Christian life, you discover certain things. In our Christian life, sometimes we're, it's an exhortation. Like tonight, we're preaching through this, and we say, boy, I need that. I learned that. And then after you learn it by exhortation or by encouragement like that, then you also learn it by experience. David here on his road with all these deliverances and all his enemies he was covered, he said, man, I have got some discoveries. I've made some determinations in my life. Here we go. Two very important determinations that we must make, discoveries we must make if we're going to be on that road to victorious life. Look at verse number 30. And this is where my thoughts were going when I first began studying this message. As for God, His way is, what's the next word, class? Perfect. So we find by practical discovery and determination, His way is perfect. We're going to go down this road with the understanding, with the determination, with the discovery that God's way is perfect. My way isn't always perfect. God's way is perfect. God's way, God's plan for my life, God's plan for our, our, our church, God's plan, it is perfect. Perfect. It's not just good, it is perfect. It may not be the easiest, but it's the best. It may not be the softest, but it is the best. His way is perfect. Perfect. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. Boy, God's way. The old David, he said, I've been, God's delivered me through so much. He says, you know why? Because I know His way is perfect. You think about it. He had His enemies, but he says, his way is perfect. He said, I, I had challenges in my life, but His way is perfect. Proverbs 13, 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. You say, oh, the Christian life is hard. No, the way, the way of transgressors, sinners, is hard. Oh, it may be difficult. It may have some issues, weak, but we can lean on the Lord. But that living a life of sin, that's where the hardness comes from. Proverbs 15, 19, The way of the slothful man, the lazy man, is as a hedge of thorns. Wow. We just have to decide His way is perfect. But I lost my job. Following God, obeying God, trusting God, but I still, but I lost my job. Guess what? His way is perfect. He's got a plan. He's got training for me. He's got help for me. His way is perfect. Perfect. When you and I decide, no matter what happens, God's way for me, God's path for me is perfect, it'll keep you on that road. Look at verse, look at verse 31. Verse 30, as for God, His way is perfect. Verse 31, who, for who is God save the Lord? Oh, I'm sorry, verse 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength. In other words, He girds me, He surrounds me, He builds me up with the strength, and maketh my way perfect. My way is only perfect when I'm following God's way, which is perfect. Amen? Oh, you say, I want my way to be perfect. Then you just take God's way. God's way is perfect, and He makes, He develops in my life a perfect way as I follow Him. So His way is perfect always, all the time, in all areas. God's way is always perfect. God's way in your family structure is perfect. God's way in our finances is perfect. God's way in our church attendance is perfect. God's way in our attire is perfect. Despite troubles, trials, heartaches, and hatreds, and failures, and all the things, God's way is perfect. Wow. Very quickly, in His way, 
He delivers. He delivers. Just some things. Verse 17. While I'm in his way, he can deliver. If I can find it, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Whoa. Boy, well, I want to stay in his way. Why? Because he delivers me when I'm in his way. His way is perfect. He had enemies. He said, my strong enemy. And people hated me. And they were too strong for me, but he delivered them. His way is perfect. Verse 19, he brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted. Verse 43 and 48, he talks about his delivery. So God's way is perfect because when I'm in his way, he can deliver me. Not only in his way, he delivers me. In his way is salvation. We saw several places. He is the God of our salvation. In his way, I am brought out. We just read that in verse 19. He brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me. In his way, he delights in me. 19, because he delighted in me. That's an amazing thought that God would delight in in us. In God's way, I am rewarded. Verse 20, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. By the way, it's interesting. God says he recorded it. He rewarded him according to his righteousness. Here's an amazing thing. People want to be rewarded by God, but live like the devil. No. He said, he rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands. He hath recompensed me. So he rewards me in his way. I'm in, in his way. I am taught. Verse 34. He teaches me. He teaches my hands to war. Well, he teaches us how to battle. He teaches us how to live. Boy, I'm glad I'm in his way because he can teach me. He rewards me. He brings me out. He delights in me. He saves me. He delivers me. Verse 35. He holds me up. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. He said, I'm glad we, I'm, i got to stay in his way. It's his way. I've determined that because his way is perfect, because it holds me up. It enlarges my steps in his way, verse 36. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me. In other words, I've got plenty of foot room. I'm not going to stumble. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to twist my ankle. When you go down those little trails or stand on rocks, no, he enlarged my steps under me, and my foot did not slip. He girds me with strength for the battle, verse 39. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Boy, we, see, if we're not in God's way, God's perfect way, we won't have strength for the battle. We won't have strength for the enemy. But when I'm in his perfect way, I'm glad he girds me up with strength for the battle. Amen. We just have to have some practical discovery, some determination that God's way is perfect. Back in verse number 30, and we'll, and we'll be done. Verse number 30 again. As for God, His way is perfect. Praise the Lord. Then He says, the word of the Lord is tried. So we find not just as His way is perfect, but His word is pure. Is pure. The word tried there means just like it's talking about purifying gold and purifying silver, trying it and testing it. God's word is pure. Psalm 12, 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. I'm glad God has preserved His Word. Amen? I'm glad we don't have to wonder. I wonder if God really said that. Yes, He did. He preserves it. But His Word is pure. Proverbs 30, verse number 5, every word of God is pure. So, we're going to go down this road. How are we going to do it? With practical discoveries. I've just discovered and I've determined that God's way is perfect and His Word is pure. So I can stand on His Word. I can follow His Word. I can obey His Word. I can trust His Word because it is pure. David looking here, maybe toward the end of his life, he says, you know, I've been delivered from all my enemies. They're all gone. Just want to do a little praising. We want to stay on that same road. God's given us some help. Are you sure you're on the road to a victorious life? If not, get on it. If you've been detoured, get back on it. Finish the road right. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, we thank you so much for your word. David here, you speaking through David to us, as you delivered him and giving him the words that we might understand, that we might be on that same road. A lifetime road to a victorious life. Lord, that doesn't mean a rich life. That doesn't mean 
A life without sorrow doesn't mean a life without struggle, doesn't mean a life without some setbacks, doesn't mean a life without enemies, but it means a life finishing, doing what you'd have us to do with the right heart and the right spirit in the place you'd have us to be and finishing strong. Lord, we thank you for these things we've seen tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Whatever you've spoken, whatever bell rang in our hearts, whatever the Holy Spirit has touched our shoulder about, that tonight we would make some decisions. Each of us a different area, each of us a different need, each of us in tune with you that you would help us along the way. God, please, that we would finish and stay on the road to victorious life. And Father, if there's somebody here that's not saved, not even sure they're on their way to heaven, they'd get that settled tonight. Lord, before it's too late, you died and paid our sin debt. You are our salvation, the horn, the strength, the power of saving our souls, that horn of salvation we saw tonight. Holy Spirit, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. As we stand to our feet and while the piano plays, if God spoke to your heart about a matter and you say, boy, I just gotta, I gotta do business with God. The altar's here. You can do it there at the pew, but the altar is here to step out and say, God, here I am, making a decision, making some changes, letting you make a change in my life. I need the road to a victorious life. So, well, I don't want to do those things, but I still want a victorious life. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Start by just loving Him. Well, I have struggled about not departing from His precepts and statutes. <laughs> That'd be so much easier if you just love Him with all your heart and all your soul. Well, I don't know about trying to push away from those temptations and sin in my life. It'll be easier if you love Him. I will love Him. I will trust Him. I will. I do and I will. Not that you were. I used to, but I am and I will.